This is Diesel Talk. So our first question is from Tom, and he left quite a lengthy comment, but his question was, since the engine in a motorhome is installed with the front facing aft, I assume your reference to left side, right side, or driver side is reversed in the motorhome application. Welcome to episode six of Diesel Talk. We have four questions today. One of them has to do with which is what side of the engine? Is there a left? Is there a right? What's the front? What's the back? Do you refer to driver's side, passenger side? Uh, there is a proper nomenclature for these items. I won't be talking about that. Another question has to do with what can you do to add more life to your engine as far as when it's got a lot of miles on it and maybe you're not getting the horsepower you used to get. And we had another question in reference to a 3116, which is an older small cat engine. And what what controls the injectors on that system? And it's kind of a complicated question, but I'll get into it. And the other question, well, you'll see. Okay, so this comment was in reference to a video I'd done where I talked about the left or the right side of the engine. Now, there is a left and a right side to an engine. Now, most people will reference it in relation to the driver's side. Now normally driver's side, at least in the US, is on the left side of the truck. Because on a truck, you typically would say it's the left side of the truck because you're standing in the rear facing forward. So the front would be where the grill's at, the left would be the driver's side, the right would be the passenger side. But that always doesn't work on an engine because in an RV, usually the engine is facing backwards. So does the engine have a left side? Does it have a right side? Well, yes, it does. The engine itself is also referenced in a similar fashion. So the flywheel side, so the rear of the engine where the flywheel is and your rear motor mounts, that's the rear of the engine. Now, the left side would be facing from the rear, facing forward. So you're facing towards where the serpentine belt is and the dampener. So the left side is going to be the side with the ECM, the intake side, um, the side with your fuel filters. Now that's always the case on a CAD engine. So in an RV, even though the engine's reversed, the left side of the engine would be on the passenger side, which is actually the right side of the motorhome. So that can get kind of confusing. So just think of the engine as its own unit. The rear is the flywheel. The front's the dampener. The left side is the side with the intake, typically, unless it's a 3116. Um, and that's facing from the rear, facing forward. So your turbo is typically on the right side of the engine because facing forward from the rear, that's going to be the right side of the engine. All right, and I'm going to show you a picture to kind of help it make more sense. All right, but that was a good question. So here we have a C15. Uh, on the left side of this picture, you can see the front. That would be the front of the engine. That's where the front structure is. And then left is on the left side with the intake. Now here's a picture of an RV with the engine removed. However, this is how the engine sits in the RV. So the front of the engine is actually the rear of the RV. And the driver's side, well, the right side of the engine is on the driver's side. And the driver's side is the left side of the RV. But it's still the right side of the engine because it's you're always looking from facing the flywheel housing to the front of the engine. So second question we have is from Amber and it is Wubu uh, C12? What? Well, a C12 is a cat engine. So our third question is from Omar. He said, yes, indeed, it is a 3116 in reference to an engineer he was talking about. Can you tell us why it's more technical? Can you please tell me what controls the injection? So is it actuated through the camshaft? By what controls the small rods on the 3116 engine? Please help me. Regards and much respect. 
Okay, so Omar is asking about a 3116, which is an older cat small engine. This would be before the 3126, which is before the C7. Now, these were mechanical engines. If you've ever seen a 3406B or any older diesel that has the fuel pump with the fuel lines that run to the head, well, this is somewhat similar to that. However, this doesn't have the high pressure fuel pump with the individual lines going to the head. So what this has is a transfer pump basically that pumps fuel into the cylinder head and it doesn't run very high pressure, maybe 40, 50 PSI. Then a camshaft lobe, similar to the newer C15s and 3406Es, rolls over a rocker arm that compresses a spring on the injector and that builds the pressure in the injector to fire the injector. Now, what controls the amount of fuel? Since the cam lobe is constant, you need something to tell the injector, hey, more fuel or less fuel or shut off. So where your Huey pump would be on a C7 or a 3126, there's something called a governor. And this governor controls what they call the rack. Now, the rack is a small series of levers and rods that runs through the head and the valve cover base and then it has little rods that go to each injector and as those rods move in or out that tells the injector through kind of a scroll setup how much fuel to apply to each cylinder so he wanted to know what's involved to change an injector on a 3116 well, a lot. Um, it's not like a 3126 or a C7 or a C15 where you just pull the injector out and you install the new one and put the overhead back on and install the overhead. Or even on a C7, you don't even have to run the overhead. You just pull the injector out, put a new one in. These I do not recommend anyone trying to do themselves. And here's why. So your injector cup, which is an insert pressed into the head on almost all of the newer engines is steel and the injector seals with an o-ring against that and that keeps combustion gases from getting into either your crankcase by blowing past the injector or into your fuel system that runs through the head well on a 3116 they didn't have steel ones they had a copper brass style one so it's a soft metal so on these it doesn't use an o-ring what they do is the injector presses into that insert so when you remove it, there's a ring that forms on the injector cup. Now, when you pull an injector out, you're supposed to ream that ring with a special reaming tool that's supposed to take that line that is formed from the old injector out of the cup. Then you have to press the new injector in. Not only that, when you do that, you're supposed to rerun the injector height and the rack, which if you've ever done one, it's very hard to do. Um, a lot of mechanics that try to do it screwed up the first time, first couple times, because it's there's a lot of little things you have to do. You have to get the the rack set up right, then you have to adjust the injector height. There's a whole bunch of stuff to do. It's a pain in the butt. If you're going to change an injector on a 3116 or try to adjust the rack or any of the rack linkage, I recommend taking it to a dealer that knows what they're doing and can do it from there. Not only that, the tools required to do the, uh, the rack adjuster on a 3116 is a big old blow molded case with like 40 different pieces. So I highly doubt someone's going to buy all of the parts and tooling to do the rack themselves. So that is my little spiel on 3116s. Um, they're complicated. If you have to change an injector, I recommend having someone that has done it before several times do it. Okay. But that was a good question. So question four is from Raul, and he asks, can you help me diagnose a weak or failing turbo system? As I have a twin turbo, and I'm not having the horsepower I used to. My engine has 1,300,000 miles on it. I'm pretty sure it's time for an overhaul. But what else can I do to keep my engine running efficient without getting an overhaul done? Okay, so our last question has to do with a engine with a lot of miles on it and he's saying he gets low boost and what he can do to revitalize his engine without getting a rebuild 
So this is a, it's kind of a tough question. I've been getting a lot of uh, turbo questions lately. I'm going to be doing a turbo video here, um, hopefully in the next week or two. But it's kind of a complicated system. Not the turbo system, but Boost. Boost is a tough subject, kind of. It's not controversial. It's just you have to understand that Boost is not necessarily low because your turbo is bad or you have a Boost leak. Boost is built by the exhaust flow of the engine by turning your inlet or your exhaust turbine, which then turns your inlet turbine. So if you have low boost, it can be a symptom and not the cause of an engine problem. So if you have low boost, but you have an engine miss, say you have three weak cylinders. Well, those cylinders aren't producing as much exhaust volume and heat, so your turbo is not going to spool up as much as it used to. Now, you might change your turbo, but that doesn't address the weak cylinder portion. But low boost can also cause weak cylinders under load. So you have to be kind of experienced in this subject, but here's, here's the deal with low boost. So does it have low boost? If it does... Then what you need to do is inspect your turbo, inspect the turbine, make sure the inlet and exhaust turbines aren't rubbing or the bearings failing. If that's the case, um, then you need a new turbo. Um, also your wastegate. Wastegates typically on cat turbos will weaken over time. And under load, you might not be getting as much max boost as you, as you used to. A good trick is to pinch the wastegate line. If your boost significantly increases, then you know your wastegate's bad. Now the problem with that is Cat typically doesn't sell the wastegate kits. You kind of have to buy a new turbo, which kind of sucks because they're really expensive. Um, outside of that, you could have leaks in a turbo boot. You could have your CAC, you know, your charger cooler that sits in front of the radiator. That could be leaking. It could also be plugged on one side. Now typically it's going to be the inlet side. So if it's plugged, you'll have boost going to the CAC, but not so much coming out of the CAC. And those are the most common forms of low boost but like i said if you have weak cylinders or weak injectors that can also cause low boost but his question really had more to do with how to efficiently kind of rejuvenate your engine without a rebuild well on rebuilds here's kind of my thing what's your blow by does it have low blow by if it has low blow by still and it's not smoking you're not pouring out white smoke or you know, any other weird colored smokes. I would say that you probably don't need a rebuild. The best indicator of a rebuild typically is blow by. So if you have low blow by still and you've taken good care of your engine, um, typically the best thing you can do for that engine is a set of injectors. Since the injectors take care of all of the firing on your cylinders, and also since a diesel doesn't have spark plugs, your injector is kind of the spark plug and the fuel system because your injector firing is what can, causes the ignition of the diesel fuel. That's really the biggest upgrade you can do for an engine outside of a rebuild. Now, typically this is a C15. If you do your injectors, you're gonna get an overhead done as well. So if your overhead's done and you have new injectors, especially if those injectors are original or they have a ton of miles on them, that can really breathe new life into your engine, okay? Uh, that's kind of my spiel on that one. Um, like I said, I'm going to be doing a turbo video here in a few weeks. Um, hopefully, you'll catch that. Uh, that was a good question. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section. Thank you.